Hi, Brian. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, thank you. Um, good to be with you. We're happy to have you. Now, can you introduce yourself to everybody? Sure. My name is Brian Fuller. I'm the Oakland High School Athletic Director. Um, I'm also a 1985 graduate of Okemos High School, and I did my student teaching at Okemos in 1994. Wow, that's great. seems like you have a lot of history with Okemos. I've been around Okemos for a while. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, I'd just like to ask you a few questions about COVID and sports. Okay. So it looks like high school sports are happening right now. Mm -hmm. um, can you give us a little insight on what is different this year because of COVID? Um, the most noticeable things um, are really twofold. One is that the, um, the players in most sports have to wear masks and those sports that don't wear masks, um, there are some other conditions, um, some social distancing. Um, and in some cases they're required to wear masks except when they're directly competing. Um, the, that's a fairly obvious one because you can see the masks on people's faces. Um, the things that you don't see are some of the screening protocols, temperature checks, um, and uh, enhanced cleaning measures that uh, we've taken to try to keep kids safe. The, the second one that's noticeable is there's been limited, if any, fans allowed to see the contest this year. Um, some, some contests have had no fans at all. Some have been limited to one or to two per player, and others have had a few more um, allowed. Depends on the space, um, indoors versus outdoors. Um, there's a variety of different factors, but um, the idea of students being able to watch um, their classmates compete hasn't really been much of a reality this year. They've been really limited in the opportunities to support their classmates. Mm. Now, the I know that the athletes have to quarantine if they become, like come into contact with someone that has COVID, you know, for 10 days. Um, Everyone really has to quarantine if they have COVID. Um, and so certainly in our environment, that would be athletes that we're most concerned about, but also we have had family members or coaches or other people um, that have had to quarantine, but also people in the community that have to quarantine um, if they're COVID positive. We, we follow the directions of the Ingham County Health Department. How does that affect you know the competition, the game, and the team itself? Well, we've had some times where um, either individuals or entire teams have not been able to participate because of positive COVID cases. Um, they've been limited, um, but they have occurred. And uh, for us, at least, it's been um, it's been yet another variable to have to deal with when we're trying to solve a problem about how to compete when there's a global pandemic ongoing. Um, we really feel like we've done a pretty good job of keeping um, the kids, their families, and the community safe. Um, but it hasn't been 100% or foolproof. Mm -hmm. Now, I know track is coming up in the spring and you know that's a big sport with a lot of students and kids. Um, what can we expect that season to look like? Are you, is it just you know the usual protocols that you spoke about? No, well, I mean, it'll be the protocols we spoke about. Um, one of the issues with track and some other sports is the, the participation numbers. We're just not able to um, have all of the kids that might traditionally come out for track, um, same way we had with some other sports this uh, this fall and winter, where because of social distancing requirements, because of limits of competition um, realities, we, we ended up in a spot where we can't have limitless kids coming out um, like they might otherwise, because there's no events for them. There's no opportunities for them to compete. And there's really no way for us to keep them safe and socially distanced. So um, there'll be limits on how many kids are allowed to be um, on the track team and in certain track events um, to try to keep everybody safe. Now, is that the same with the fans, a limited amount of fans or? There, there hasn't been direct guidance for spring sports yet. We expect that to come out sometime this week, um, but uh, I expect there to be limitations on spectators, um, likely some sort of per person or per player um, limits on those fans, um, masks and social distance requirements. But again, it's easier to manage some of those things outdoors because you can spread people out easier. Um, on the, the stands of a track meet, you can spread people out a lot farther than you can in the stands of a basketball game. Mm -hmm. um, some of our other sports like tennis, golf, there's such a wide open area that you can really 
do a little bit more social distancing than you can in some limited space um, places. But even game, our sports like baseball and softball lend themselves to having people be able to watch the games and spread out around the facility so they're really not in close proximity to other fans. And that really allows us opportunities for people to be able to watch those contests um, more easily than they could in the winter. Now, how are you doing spectators with this season? Is it just the per person for basketball, say? Yeah, so for basketball, it has been limited to two um, per player. Um, there's been recently some, um, some adjustments to the spectator limits. And so we have allowed the players to get their families in. So um, mom and dad, in a lot of cases, in some other cases, they're less traditional. They might be um, so split families. So step parents might be involved. Some other family members, aunts, uncles, grandparents um, are slowly being allowed in. Um, uh, but it really hasn't created an opportunity for students or unaffiliated. Um, you know, if you don't have a family member that's playing, you probably can't get in to watch. Mm -hmm. In some sports like swimming, um, we haven't even had competitors in the same building with us. We've done virtual meets and those crowds have been limited as well. Mm -hmm. um, I, I know, for example, we're severely limited with our wrestling districts coming up, um, both team districts and individual districts. And in some cases, we're only being allowed one person per wrestler. So it really varies across the board. Our ski team went most of the season without any fans allowed. So uh, it hasn't been uniform, but really a lot of it has to do with the competition, the venue, um, and the ability to keep people safe. Oh, okay. So students haven't been able to watch, you know, their own team? Not typically. Um, we have, um, we've gotten PixLot cameras, um, which run on the NFHS network. And so, for instance, if you wanted to watch tonight's basketball game, which is at DeWitt, then you could watch on the NFHS network. There's a camera installed and you'll be able to watch the game. Um, we have a camera installed in our gym. We have a camera installed on our turf field. And so people that are interested in watching the games, that would be an avenue for them to, to be able to watch the games. But by and large, the students really have not been part of the spectator group um, for most of the years at most of our events. Mm -hmm. um, and so I know we, there was no activities at all for a period of time, um, November to December. And then there was another shutdown in um, January. Um, so some activities were going on, other activities were not. Um, and so there has been some, some shutdowns. We've had people playing for the last month plus um, in pretty much all of our winter sports. Okay. Yeah. I was just wondering if because of the last shutdown, if that affected um, anything with like competitions and if it made the season have it to be dramatically reduced the number of competitions for basketball, wrestling, and hockey. Um, we created schedules and we recreated schedules and we recreated them again. And then we recreated them again as different, um, different factors came into play. Typically um, uh, there are certain limits. Hockey would have 25 contest days, basketball 20. Um, and so nobody's getting close to those numbers. They didn't get close to them really in the fall either. Um, we played six football games with a postseason game that everybody got. Usually you'd have nine. And so we played seven. Nine, and you'd have a 10th game if you got in the playoffs. Soccer has 18 dates allowed. Um, I think they played eight. So, I mean, it's been like that pretty much all year. Um, just different circumstances, you know, whether it's a shutdown of all activities or specific shutdowns because of any kind of COVID issues or close contacts or other contact tracing issues. Right. Okay. Well, thank you so much for giving me all this information about, you know, the sports. Do you have anything else to say or? No, we're just, we're going to keep plugging away. It's, I know it's hard and it's frustrating and um, you know, there's a lot of things that aren't the same, but it is also an opportunity for our kids to have a little bit of sense of normalcy. And, and when they've been able to practice and compete, um, I know that they have enjoyed it. Their parents have enjoyed it. Um, people have been great in the community about supporting. Um, and we're hopeful that the spring looks better than the winter and the fall did and that we move forward and that people are able to stay safe and healthy and uh, return to some sense of normalcy, um, especially with school classes in person starting up this week. For sure. Well, thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Have a great day. You too.